is not provided. But we have provided so, here that it is an MBN category, C3 DSNS. Oh, voting without biometric verification, no signature, and a duplicate serial number. So for these two polling stations, the EC used the same serial number, and that is the malpractice that we are talking about. Now, Dr. Romney, if you look at 257 on our list, it's CAF, there's Catholic Primary School, CAF, P-A-T-H, Primary P-R-Y, School S-C-H, Autu Mankesim B, and that is on page seven of your information. And the exhibit number is MBP one Five five one, and it is also exhibit number MBP one five eight five. Can you look at this exhibit? Yeah. MBP1585. Now, this exhibit is duplicated in respect of the same polling station and is within the P-series in both cases. Is that correct? Uh, uh, the the memory generated number was one P MBP 1551 electronically we have, and we noted it, the two exhibit numbers on the sheet we provided Can you this answer morning. my question? No, I'm answering Dr. your question. Baumea, are they in respect of the same polling station, two exhibits within the P series? Yes, they are, and we noted, we noted that um, on this on this information. We provided you that information. But it doesn't take away from the point that you have Typically, serial numbers being used in respect of two polling stations, the same serial number, and that is the malpractice that we are talking about. Now, in respect of all these polling stations listed, which you reviewed, you had a polling agent present, is that correct? Yes, it is correct, as far as I'm aware.
And you have not seen any protest about serial number from any of the polling agents, have you not? No, no. I think that whole phenomenon was too clever by half. Now, because at the polling station, my laws, a polling agent cannot detect a duplicate serial number. It's impossible. It's only after all the forms come in that you do the analysis. And even with the assistance of computers that we started finding them uh, in, in an any significant number. It's not the sort of thing a polling agent will look at the form and say, this is a duplicate serial number. But it is being hidden, and, and that is, this is why the EC, for the first time in our history, printed only for the presidential election a duplicates, a set of duplicates. Now, in fact, Dr. Valmier, the reason the polling agents would not even look at the serial number is that the serial number is irrelevant. It's irrelevant to the results, the votes at the place. Is that not so? That is not so, my okay. lord. The serial number is integral. Very well. <laughs> Now, my lords, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, my lords, my lords, at this stage, my lords, we'd like to tender the next list, which we checked yesterday, and um, we were checked against the pink sheets, and it's lot three within this series. My, my lords, perhaps um, to move forward quickly, we can provide Three, four. We can tend that with three, two. Okay, let's do three. Yeah. We'll start with three. No, no, we have no objection. No, this is my lord. Although you just continue. Yes.
Now, the, the first Number three to five. first page and it is exhibit A exhibit MBP zero 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 four four five. Is that correct? Yes, my lord. And the counterpart that you have provided the counterpart that you have provided is also See, according to you, the counterpart is funeral grounds Nakaba B, according to you. Yes, my lord. And according to you, the exhibit number, according to the information you provided us, is exhibit MBP. Zero zero five nine nine eight, according to you. Yes, my lord. Now, let me show you in your exhibits attached to your affidavit. Let me show you what is numbered exhibit zero MBP zero zero five nine nine eight. Yeah, here we are. Just let me show you that. Can you see on this exhibit that this is indeed numbered 005998? Can you see that? I can see that. So, Dr. Baumia, it is not true when you try to suggest 
that an exhibit with that number has been provided to this court. This is not true. In the terms that are indicated now by you. This yeah, funeral, they, 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 this is what I'm count, saying, that funeral what you're showing is that there must have been, there, must, there was a mislabeling of this exhibit number. But the bottom line is that you have two polling stations, public, GSS, Pristia, funeral grounds, Nakaba, for which the same serial number was used. And that is a malpractice. That is not in dispute. We can relabel these properly. Dr. Baumia, this is an example of your dishonesty to this court. Because, Dr. Baumia, there is an exhibit that you have attached to your affidavit. It's exhibit 5998 with a certain polling station. Now, you're giving a different polling station that exhibit number, which is already in evidence. Well, there That's is, what you're doing. There is, there is an error, but there is no dishonesty. If you want to be honest with the court, let us put down my analysis. If you are not afraid of the truth, let us put down my analysis and show me one repeated polling station in my analysis. If you are afraid of the truth, Dr. then of course you will hide behind these exhibit numbers. Dr. Baumia, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not a, not a free fight. Uh, um, uh, just state your answer to it without uh, yeah. any book on blues. <laughs> yeah, but my lord, with, with the greatest respect, I do not think we can treat this lightly. This witness is claiming that I'm afraid of the truth. I'm asking him questions. He's not uh, answering them. He's showing his dishonesty blatantly. I'm, I'm not afraid of the truth. What, what bothers me is the dishonesty of this witness, my lords. And this witness cannot just be allowed to go on making statements. You are afraid of yeah, the truth. Yeah, that's why I called him to order on that uh, point. I'm just... <laughs> Is, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> don't fight the battle beyond its confines, you see. Um, each uh, side uh, can present its case, you know, to the court um, as per the procedure of the court. See, there are certain things which are for examination, chief, there are certain things for cross examination. So, uh, just limit yourself to the extent of the question, which I know you always understand more than us. If, uh, okay. But my lords, is a witness, is a witness going to be warned not to persist in that? Because otherwise, we're going to keep my hearing. Lord, I mean, um, my lords, my lords, I think that counsel got the answer that he asked for. He first accused the witness again, not for the first time, of being dishonest. Yes. He did that, accusing the witness of being dishonest. And so I don't know what he's complaining about. You called him names, and he responded. No, but you see, that's what I referred to at the last sitting. It's not like a criminal trial where a prosecution witness gives evidence and then um, uh, he, uh, the accused comes to give, it, I mean, attacks his credibility and then, you know, there's cross uh, uh, labeling of uh, characters. This one is one way. It's a, he is counsel, he is cross-examining, uh, cross can put uh, matters of dishonesty. The only thing is, uh, counsel should not make an imputation which he cannot establish. But he cannot <laughs> cross-fire his uh, standing. No, no, no. That's not correct. It's not in the witness box like him. Yes, so you are not entitled to <laughs> 
even though uh, cross label him. You see, in the witness box is your credibility which is at stake. It's yours that can be attacked. You see, if the attack is unfair, uh, we'll look into that. But those legitimate arrows in <laughs> cross examination. Yes, yes. I'm suggesting to you, I'm suggesting to you that the exhibit MBP005998 that you have included in your response is not one of the exhibits that you attached you are to David. The labeling is obviously wrong, so we'll have to find out exactly what labeling it was given. You haven't answered my question. I'm saying that the reference you have made to funeral grounds, the polling station funeral grounds, Nakaba, which you claim bears the exhibit number MBP005998, I'm suggesting to you that that exhibit number is borne by a different polling station exhibit, not by funeral grounds. I've given you that exhibit, it's in front of you. That's correct, you have given me that exhibit. So we just have to find out the exhibit number for Nakaba as it, it was presented. Um, we are not disputing that there was a duplicate serial number used for these two polling stations. That is a malpractice and that is what we are here for. And all of these duplicates, by the way, were provided for you in the federal and better particulars. There's nothing new that you are finding out here. We've listed all of these, and you can find all of these duplicates in the further and better particulars. So nothing is being made up. They were provided extensively. Also provided the exhibit that is numbered 327 on our list filling station Christia. And that has a number exhibit MBP00. Five nine eight five MVP five nine eight five. And according to the information that you've uh, provided, the serial number that is on that exhibit, exhibit MBP005985, is to be found in exhibit MBP004533. Yes, my lord. Now, that is also in the P series. Yes, my lord. And in that series, there is another exhibit, MBP005988, which I'm showing to you now.
This exhibit number is the same polling station as exhibit MBP 005985. Did not. 5988. Yeah. Yes, it is, my lord. And they both are within the P category. Yes, it is, my lord. And if you look at the first English Arabic school, Pristia, it has an exhibit number MBP004533. Is that right? Yes, my lord. Now have a look at this exhibit MBP005987. And tell the court whether that is the same polling station. It is the same polling station as in exhibit MBP 004533, is it not? Yes, my lords, it is. These are not ghost polling stations. English Arabic School, Pristia, and polling station Pristia are polling stations for which duplicate serial numbers were used. The same serial number for the same for the two polling stations and this is the more practice. I think there's been a mislabeling here. But as far as our analysis is concerned, these are more practices that reflect the and there is no double counting. Now if we look at the polling station number 335 on our list. This is DA Primary School Opedeka. Opedeka. I was I was tutored in the pronunciation. <laughs> On 
on this occasion, my learned friend is not saying back home. So. <laughs> but um, in respect of uh, BA Primary School, Kofedeka, you have exhibited it in your affidavit as MBP. 003878. Have you not? Yes, my lord. Have a look at this and confirm to the court that that is the same polling station. This exhibit is the same polling station, is it not? That's right. And In respect is... of EA Primary School, Copa de Ca, yes, which, is in, which is in your P series as... We are classifying it as we exhibited as can, in can the you, K can series. Can you let me finish my question? Sure. It is in the P series as 003873. It is that which we now find. No, we, we have told you that in what the information we presented, that it's in the key category, over voting and no signature, and this is how it is exhibited. In uh, your yeah. affidavit, yeah. you attached exhibit MBP 003878, with this polling station pink sheet. With you the attack MBK22, that's what you have just given me. I'm not seeing MBP, that's what I'm saying. If there was a, a, another attachment, it is a mislabeling. The, the, what we have provided you this morning tells you that this belongs in the K category. We have told you it's C1NS, and this is consistent with what you are providing here. So um, I don't have any. Uh, worries about that. It's overvoting no signature. That is its proper categorization. And so when you attached it, when you attached it as exhibit MVP, if this was attacked as an exhibit MVP in addition, then it was an error. And we will not count it twice in our analysis. That cannot happen. So we will only use it once. And as we are telling you, we are using it in the key category, over 14, and no signature. Dr. Bongen, in this court, we do take uh, affidavits uh, seriously. And I'm going to give you Now, Dr. Baumier, you see, the K series in paragraph 51 of your affidavit has nothing to do with serial numbers. You agree with that? That is correct. And this is the information we have provided you this morning, that the category that it is in is C1NS and not in the 
uh, duplicate serial number category, you've seen that we've not provided a duplicate in the information we've provided you, but rather indicated that its proper categorization is in the key category. If you look at the polling station number 337 on our list, EA Primary School Adapter, um, that is exhibit MBP 003882 attached to your affidavit, is it not? MBP 003882. Uh, we have indicated that this belongs. Can you can you, can you wait for my question? So in your affidavit, you exhibited it within the series of same serial number in your affidavit. Is that correct? I, I, I would presume so. I cannot see all the. Uh, things in my mind right now, but I'll presume that it was exhibited under that. But we, what we are saying is that we have classified this under voting without verification along with the duplicate serial number, and, and this is what we are talking about. Now have a look at exhibit MBM. That exhibit is in respect of the same polling station in respect of which you have exhibit MBP 003882, is it not? Yes, the MBM category is voting without verification as well as duplicate serial number. And it is properly classified here as MBM. That's what I'm saying that when you look at the MBP classification. We have noted that we are using this in the MBM category for the purposes of, of this analysis. And, and, and so there is no double counting and there is no attempt to mislead. Now, the polling station numbered 359, E.B. Now, that polling station has an exhibit numbered MBP 003874. Is that correct? Yes, my
Have a look at this exhibit MBH663. This exhibit is the same polling station, is it not? It is. And it is an exhibit MBH663, which indicates that you have approved the case of overvoting as well as duplicate serial number. And we have indicated in the information we provided that this is, this is categorized under the H category, not the P category in our analysis. So it is properly exhibited here. Uh, if there's any mistake, it's in the electronic labeling, but it's properly exhibited as in the H category. Now, my lords, as I indicated, I'm not going to go through all the examples, but we'll move to a different lot. I will, in each lot, I will just, I will illustrate the nature of the duplications and um, we'll proceed. For lot, the next lot, um, lot four in this series, and um, lot five in this series as well. We'd especially like to tender these two exhibits. No objection. No, no objection. No objection. 
objection, my lord. Now have a look at this um, Which lot are we now on by lot? Four six three. Four six three on lot four, which is exhibit thirty four. Can you please register? This thirty four can can I have an exhibit? The lot four. That is in respect of EC Dage as Kwamang and the polling station code is A150801. Now you exhibited this with the exhibit number MBP006088. You are aware of that, are you not? Yes, my lord. And according to the information you are providing, the counterpart, in terms of the same serial number, you are showing as DC primary Victor Chrome. MBP006012. Yes, my lord. Now have a look at this exhibit, which is also in the P series.
And this exhibit in the P-Series 006089 is the same as the polling station in exhibit MBP 006012. Is that right? Yes, it is, my lord. And both are in the P series. They are in the P series, but they will only be used once in the analysis. Now, I'm going to show you one of your P, one of the polling stations. I'm, I'm going to refer you to one of your polling stations in the P category, which is Kologo Tour Primary School, which is the is numbered Have a look at this exhibit, MBM627, and confirm that it is the same polling station as you exhibited as MBP004477. In your information, I believe it comes at page 7, and you identify the exhibit number in the P series, you identify that as MBP 
0004450. That's how you identify in the P series. Is that correct? In your information provided. You confirm that you exhibited MBP 000450. Yeah, we have here MBM 627 or Colocotuo. I've not seen the exhibit for MBM MBP 004477, which is what we have here. Um, but you saw that two, exhibit. It was one of the exhibits which your council reviewed with you, which is on the list that you went home with and wrote, provided information on. That, uh, information, I, the, that um, information indicates that Kologo Tuo, Kologo Tuo Junior High School has the exhibit number 000450. Is that correct? Ah, okay. There's a Kologo Junior High School and there's a Tuo Primary School. Uh, the Kolobo Junior High School. I'm with you now. Zero 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 four five zero. And its counterpart is Zuo Primary. Zero zero four four seven nine. So you have exhibited before this court in the P series this polling station, have you not? Yes, we have. And, I, I, and, and I'm showing you now an exhibit that is in another series. Do you see that? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That this, if you look at the pink sheet, tells you that there was voting without ver verification as well as um, a duplicate serial number being used. So its proper uh, classification should be, as we have seen on this pink sheet here, should be in the M category. And so, and, and, and in any case, as I said before, uh, you will not, the analysis is not affected in any way. With duplicate serial numbers for these two polling stations, you are going to double count them because you mis mislabeled them in the process. Number 455 on the list, Kapania, 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 KP, Kapania, Market Square. That is 455 on our list. And you have exhibited it as MBP zero z it's page seven on your on the information you provided, page seven. You've exhibited it in the MBP category with the exhibit number 4481. Yes, my lord. Now, that same polling station pink sheet comes under MBP 00452. You see that? You recognize that, do you not, in your own information? That same polling station, Kafana, Kapana, Kapania Market Square, 
is MBP004481. That's right. And it's also MBP000452. So one exhibit... 452, that's Pologo Market Square. No, I'm talking now about the exhibit number. That's correct. In your affidavit. I'm not talking about a list 452. I'm talking about no, the no, exhibit I'm, number. And, and, and you are talking of 000452. Yes. And I'm saying that exhibit number is applying to Kologo Market Square. That's with right. the same, no, with a dip, there's 24789. Yes. Then. So what I'm saying to you is that that polling station is repeated with a different exhibit number. You can see that. Which polling station? Kologo Kapania Market Square. Kapania Market Square. Where is the exhibit number repeated? Well, well again, the, the, I don't know whether the list has been updated, but... Um, If I can provide my list, maybe there's a uh, couple near market squares over here. So you just show them. This is the current one. I think there was. This is this the current one or? I think there were some changes made in the list that were provided with. So I may I may need to be made current. Kapania Market Square, MBP 4481. Is that the same polling station as in this exhibit, MBH 751? MBH 751. So this is in respect of Kapania Market Square, which, which you 
have confirmed is in your P series as 004481. Is that the same polling station? Yes, my lord, and we've confirmed and that it is in the MBH category as we have exhibited here. Uh, we have provided that information. And this is a polling station where you had overvoting as well as the use of a duplicate serial number. And this is why we are here today. And in respect of the next one, Hologo Market Square, uh, it was actually the one before, I'm sorry. It was the one before. But I'm going to give you another exhibit. This is Hologo Market Square. In respect of that also, you have another example of duplication exhibit MBM. My lords, it is, there are several numbers in this one, but on his identification, he says zero, MBP, zero, zero, zero. No, no, I was talking of yours. Oh, I'm sorry. On your, on your list. It is four, five. Four by three. Four by three. This Kolgo two is not Kolgo. Four five three is Kolgo two. Yes, my lord. And it was shown it was shown in his uh, information as exhibit zero. Zero zero four five two. And how, you, how many zeros? Is that the same polling station? Yes, my lord, it is. And there is a duplication in labeling. For the size of work that we did, some of these errors are not surprising. Even for just the 2,000 that you gave us, they have duplications in them. So it is not really an issue uh, that we are trying to mislead the court. This is only used once in our analysis, if you care to look. And this exhibit, Kologo 2, oh, sorry, Kologo,
Now, in relation to that Kologoto tool primary, it is not only your P series, but it also is exhibit MVM627. This is what I just said, that it is putting without biometric verification in that polling station. And this has also been used, the same serial number has also been used with Zulu Primary School. And this is why it is a malpractice. Ask more questions. <laughs> well, it's past 12.30. Mm -hmm. um, my lords, I understand we have a meeting scheduled with the referee. Um, I believe at 12.30. And um, I don't know what your lordship's directions are in respect of that meeting. I think that meeting is more or less the kickoff mm -hmm. meeting for the the work of the referee. And they we, we, we had letters this morning inviting us for that. We thought uh, that one was to go on side by side. You have two representatives to they uh, actually wrote to council. I I mean I, I received the letter as I was walking in this morning. They did ask for a meeting with council. And I believe uh, letters have been distributed to uh, my my letter friends as well. And and I I mean I I, I, I that's why I was asking for directions because but, uh, the, the, but uh, uh, that that meeting they said twelve thirty. That meeting is twelve thirty and um, yes okay so it means that we will have this more practice eat into our lunch time. Uh, well, but you are doing it. Um, the our tender is just an inaugural type of thing. Uh, and, um, okay, so I will resume at two. Very well. Well, is this um, inaugural meeting for council? Because we were under the impression that it's the representatives that will attend this meeting. Well, what they're saying is that they wrote to council, the KPMG. Uh, so, yeah, Lord, who are you not writing to? Yeah, my Lord, the correspondence will definitely come to council on other parties. Yes. But we have representatives, so we can move on with this. Um, Process on nation. Yes, uh, well, but two o'clock we are coming back, so we don't know what they may like to raise. You can enlighten them there and come, and then uh, we we'll continue. And no council doesn't go there again, isn't it? Hello.
are not harmful in the case of heart attack, care not to survive. But um, at the same time, to certain matters can be further expedited. For example, what I'm driving at is witness are consistent. Now the ninth deportation, but his version is how uh, it has been revised, it was mislabeling. When the lists are prepared, what will be lost by setting out sets of deportation, and then uh, where he says is not, not with. Is there anything to be lost? That, that is how I intend to proceed. We will put in evidence from other lists which have been provided. Uh, respectfully asking, make sure that he provided, presented in the format that has already been That is the case. Then what if the um, this remaining, which he has, then you know when he comes back with a reformatting, if, if there is anything that arises, then we intended actually to put in the remaining um, okay. that we have in connection with this matter, and um, he has reviewed. I understand he has reviewed all of them. So subject yes. to representation. Yeah, so I thought that uh, once he has bought his list, I even thought they were also defended. That form. Process. Indicated that before. Yeah, okay, okay. I, I understand what you are saying there. But uh, so far, I suppose all that we've covered this morning, he has done his corresponding uh, uh, all that we've dealt with. And, and beyond. He, he has also had the chance to go beyond to the list that we are about to send. Okay. The list that we are about to send that have all I understand. So, uh, so I was thinking that once you have his list, um, one to one is for us, and then we just get out the phone number. All the information is there. All right. I need the information. Bites counterparts which were not on our list. The counterparts that he says yeah. have the same serial number. Those counterparts were not on our list. So those counterparts rise to another series of deportations. In other words, we have a list where we see MBP004471 yeah. with a serial number yeah. 0024786. Yeah. He then provides a counterpart with that same serial number. That's counterpart. That's counterpart. And he provides that information. We are able to show him that that counterpart also has been So,
My Lord, just for the sake of clarity, 11 to 22. Yes. So the 11 is actually a very long list. And it goes all the way to 2,200.
I don't see no objection. My lords, no objection. We have no objection, my lords. Now, Dr. Bormia, it is clear that um, the MBP category particularly has a lot of duplications. Is that not correct? I, I wouldn't say a lot. It's a category with 6,822. Um, I don't really see much in the way of duplications. What you were pointing out was a very small fraction. And they are mislabeling, so I wouldn't really say um, there is a problem with the analysis. My, my lords, you would recall that when the first respondent requested for further and better particulars on February 5th and 7th, paragraph 10 of their request, the court asked us to provide the analysis underpinning our each, the voter location. And that analysis was provided, and it contained all of these polling stations, all of them, all 11,842, all the 6,822 polling stations in the P category. There is not one point that you can point to the further and better particulars, and the analysis contained therein of any duplication. So there is no duplication. And if they look, the only difference between the further and better particulars we provided and what we are relying on now is that we've deleted 704 polling stations. So if they look at the further and better particulars, they cannot point to a single duplication in that category. Dr. Balmea, there are duplications also in the further and better particulars. I'm putting it to you. I, I don't think so. I think that if you look at the uh, further and better particulars in respect of the 24 or so individual categories, you will not find duplications. But if you look at it in the area of standalone categories, so that you look at everything with overvoting or everything with voting without biometric verification or everything with no signature, on the standalone categories you will see uh, duplications. But in the context of the 24 categories that were put together to avoid multiple counting and uh, double counting, then you will not find duplications. Now, in fact, I'm suggesting to you that you did not attach to your affidavit under the NDP category 6,822 distinct exhibits as you claimed in paragraph 56. As far as I'm aware, I did. In fact, you and your co-petitioners, you knew that you are not attached 6,823 distinct exhibits. You knew that when you made that uh, deposition in paragraph 56. That's what I'm suggesting to you. Uh, I disagree with you. You also did not, in fact, attach 
to your affidavit under the MVP category, pink sheets in respect of 6,823 polling stations. You did not attach to your affidavit under the MVP category, pink sheets in respect of 6,823 polling stations as you claimed you had in your paragraph 56. You did not. As far as I'm aware, we did. I'm further suggesting to you that in terms of all the exhibits, in the various categories, you have not submitted exhibits in respect of 11,000 916 polling stations as in your petition. Yes, my lord, we submitted exhibits in respect of 11,842, not 11,916. I'm suggesting to you that in fact you did not even submit in respect of 11,842. That has been your complaint since receiving the federal and better particulars. Even before receiving the pink sheet, you said the federal and better particulars was only submitted with respect to 8,000 or so polling stations, and you've held on to that view to date. So you are aware? Yes, but we disagree. As I'm suggesting to you that your further and better particulars also did not relate to 11,916 or even 11,842. I think you are wrong. In respect of, of course, the pink sheet, we will know when the count is done. So that's quite straightforward. Now, I'm also suggesting to you that you you have actually included in your exhibits attached to your affidavit you have included a number of polling stations which did not even feature in the further and better particulars. Do you have that list? The, I'm, I'm not aware, but I'm just saying that we have actually deleted 704 I'm not talking stations. about deletions. I'm, I'm saying, saying that, that whatever we have in our analysis has, is also in the further and better particulars. You cannot go padding sheets and expect that that will win you a case. That is what you have in your analysis and what you can prove. That is what will win you a case. And so I don't really get this issue of padding. Listen to my question. I am saying to you, I'm suggesting to you that in your exhibits you have included pink sheets in respect of polling stations which did not feature at all in your further and better particulars. I mean, we should, I mean, we saw, for example, is that true in the, or is that advert, not? I'm is just that saying, true? if that is true, that cannot have been deliberate. If, for example, you find a parliamentary sheet in there and that we saw the other day, it could not have been deliberate. There's no reason for wanting to include pink sheets that are not even part of the further and better particulars because they will not be part of the analysis. If you want to mislead the court, then you should see that in the analysis to come and claim that you should announce so many votes because I have so many pink sheets. But if you look at the analysis, even from the further and better particulars, where we had 11,842 polling stations, you will see that there is no attempt to duplicate. It's all very clear. <laughs> I'm saying that if there were any um, pink sheets, then it could not have been deliberate. Wow. 
عن وعن problem I have is that the better federal data particulars um, did not refer to any pin sheets either by number or exhibit. They referred to polling stations. Yeah. Yes. So, polling stations. so what I put to him was that there were polling stations. No, I've understood. I'm asking this. I don't know uh, how that clarification can be ascertained from the further and better particulars, since they are just figures not related to exhibits uh, or their numbers. Uh, yes, but they are all from pink sheets. I mean, they, they relate to pink sheets. The particulars of which are okay. Yeah, all right. provided. All right. All right. Now, my lords, um, on this subject, we, we will in our addresses, we, we will provide, because further and better particulars are not in evidence, we, are, we do not intend to take this matter at the level Has this court ruled that the further and better particulars are not in evidence? Unless Mr. Chiketa is part of the bench. My lords, I, <laughs> my lords as, a, as a matter of law, <laughs> My lords, the further and better particulars are part of pleadings. They are not part of evidence. That's, uh, they are part of pleadings. When pleadings are made, one side can ask for further. But, 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 but my lords, may I proceed? Uh, we, we've indicated that... Uh, <laughs> May I proceed? Um, so the further and better particulars uh, were based on um, 11,842 pink sheets, Because uh, now you're talking of um, 11,842, I thought that number came down from a certain higher figure. Yes, initially we had talked about 11,916, but when we yes. presented the further and better particulars, we only presented for 11,842. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. my lord. Okay. Easy job, sir, Bob, Dr. Baumia, what you are just saying is not even true. At the stage of further and better particulars, the court ordered you to provide 11,000, to provide pink sheets in respect of the 11, uh, particulars, I'm sorry, particulars, in respect of the 11,916 polling stations that were in your amended petition. That was the court's order. And as I've said before, my lord, we only provide... Was that the court's order? Yes, and as I've said before, now, we only provided 11,842 uh, polling stations and the court, I think, if this issue was raised and the sentiment was that in that case we cannot leave evidence on what we have not provided. I think that was what the sentiment from the bench was. <laughs> you know, Dr. Baumia, at that point, and really, I think we'll proceed. My lord will, will proceed. Um, Dr. Baumia, this, um, this, this uh, same serial number issue, uh, you are aware that it did not feature when your representatives, including the co-petitioner, when they met with the electoral commissioner, uh, the chairman of the electoral commission on the 9th, I believe, of December. Your weather I didn't come up at all, aren't you? I, I would not be surprised. As I said, this was a very sophisticated operation, and we needed a lot of attention and, and investigation to uncover it. It, it. it is not obvious to you. It's very innocuous when you look at the 
serial number duplicates. But when you look at it closely and see, especially with the help of, of the computer, you are able to uncover a lot more. So yes, they did not, uh, at the time, I think, I don't know whether it was the 7th or the 8th or the 9th when they had a meeting, maybe 8th or 9th, but they couldn't have had information on the duplicate serial numbers. But that doesn't preclude us from bringing that more practice to the notice of the court. In fact, I'd like you to have a look at this letter. Can you identify the signature of your co-petitioner, the third, the third petitioner on that letter? pursuant petition was actually on more expanded grounds than the complaints that were raised on the 8th December uh, meeting. With yes, my lord, I think um, there's, I mean, the I want him to identify the signature of the third petitioner. He's, he's testifying on behalf of the third petitioner as well. So I think it's appropriate that he identifies. Uh, he's testifying on behalf of the third petitioner. Is that the signature of the third petitioner? Let me just check that I hope it's not like the last letter I had to write it. Yeah, it looks like his signature. It looks like his signature. Now, my lords, we like this. And it, 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 um, it is on the letterhead of the New Patriotic Party. It is. And it's addressed to the second respondent, is it not? Yes, it is. And it is in relation to the election December 2012, is it not? It is. My Lord, once again we have this situation where a document is supposed to be identified and then there's so many supplementary questions. The last time I objected and asked that those questions should be expired from the records, I was told I got up late. Today again, a document has been identified as supplementary questions. I hope I'm not too late in getting that to object. Uh, well, those supplementary questions, I haven't even got them on record. So. Yes, my lord. This is, um, this is a document that effectively is a document of the witness. He's, he's, he's testifying on behalf of the third petitioner. And he has identified, he has recognized the third petitioner's signature. He's identified the contents of this exhibit in relation to the December elections. And, and I think after, I mean, I don't know if he's objecting to, to my question, but basically I'm laying the foundation to tender the document in evidence. Yes. Uh... Uh, 
ask him to identify the document. Uh, yes, and I'm laying the foundation yeah. uh, to tender the document. Dated 9th December. Yes, uh, you've identified it? I, I say it looks like the signature of the chairman of the party. Um, it's a photocopy. Uh, so that's all I can say. And attached to that letter, you see a statement that was issued as a public statement. Do you not? Yes, I see an unsigned statement on the letterhead of the New Patriotic Party. Just have a look at what is in that statement, and we are objecting to those questions. You asked him to identify a signature. This is not a document coming from him. And so... It is. It is not coming from him. It's not a document coming from him. He cannot answer the questions you are asking him to answer. The document is not in evidence, and therefore he cannot speak to the contents of the document. It's just for identification. He, asked, he was asked to identify the signature. He has done that. You cannot go on to ask about the contents of the document when it is not in evidence. Yes. Um, Dr. Bamiyan, you recall that in your affidavit you said in paragraph 1 that you... Is he responding to my objection or is just... Yeah, I think so. Uh, is? Now, my lord, I am laying the foundation to tendering a document. He has objected to the witness looking at the contents of the document. Yes. I am proceeding to ask the witness a question which will justify the earlier question that I made. So, I... Leaving yeah, yeah, do you repair works? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm leaving in abeyance uh, the, the content until I've established the, the ground that I want to. So you did say in paragraph one of your affidavit, did you know that? My Lord, you have I took an objection to a question. Is counsel redrawing that question? Because he asked the question and I took an objection to it. If he's well, it, uh, as I so. understand it, he's saying he's rephrasing. So you should uh, say he's withdrawing the question. That led to the objection. Oh, you should withdraw it. <laughs> in practice, what is the difference between rephrasing a question and withdrawing? Uh, if he didn't rephrase it, I mean, something that is amended, uh, it's an amended question now. My Lord, it's I got the up. same as what... I got up and I yes. raised an objection. This is the highest court of the land. If he agrees with the objection, you say he's withdrawing his question and he's going to rephrase it. That, I think, this is the substance of what he has done. This is a substance. Let's deal with substance, not, uh, you know, uh, my proposals of... Um, yeah, okay, that's... No, that, that, that has... In paragraph one... In progress. In right? paragraph one of your affidavit, you recall you said you have the authority of the first and third petitioners to swear to this affidavit on our joint behalf in respect of matters which that are within my personal knowledge and information and which I believe to be true. Is that, do you recall that? That's right, with respect of matters within my personal knowledge. Which affidavit is Paragraph one of the affidavit of Dr. Bormio of 7th of April, 2013. Yes. And the document 
that you have seen the signature of the third petitioner on is a document that is in respect of matters within his personal knowledge and which he gave you information about. Is but that is not my personal knowledge. My Lord, we wish to tender that document in evidence. I will object to it. The witness has said that he cannot identify the content. It is not within his personal knowledge. And therefore, he cannot answer questions on that document. It is not even part of the pleadings that the petitioners have put forward in this court. I'm saying that the witness has answered to say that it is not within his personal knowledge. He is not the author of the letter. He cannot testify to the contents. Neither can he answer questions on it. Furthermore, it's not part of the pleadings of the petitioners. It's not part of the affidavit which the witness has deposed to be. Lastly, the document was not addressed to the third respondent. It's a document that is addressed to the second respondent. They can properly can kind of tender it. You said the document was not addressed to the third respondent? It's a document that is addressed to the second respondent, the EC. They are parties here. They can come and tender it to their witness. But certainly not the third respondent. It's not even addressed to them. Now, my lords, uh, respectfully, it is true that the document was not addressed to the first respondent because it was written by the, the third respondent. It was the, the third petitioner, I'm sorry. It was written by the third petitioner, and that is why we are seeking to tender it through the person who is testifying on behalf of the third petitioner. And my lords, in paragraphs Nineteen and twenty. Of the affidavit of Johnson Asiedu in Ketia, for and on behalf of the first and third respondents, filed on the fifteenth of April. The deponent refers to the fact that third petitioner also attended the meeting, and that is a meeting in connection with which we are tendering this document. Attended the meeting on behalf of first petitioner and the NPP. It was at the meeting that those of us representing the first and third respondents heard for the first time that the NPP had earlier written a petition to the second respondent making some allegations of voting malpractice. My lords, this is exactly what we are seeking to tender. And in paragraph 22, paragraph 20 goes on, paragraph 20.
at the meeting, and it reads the NPP speaking through the third petitioner, and Kwabla Jepon, one of his representatives, alleged that they had proof of posting and so on. That's paragraph 20. And then in paragraphs 21 and 22, the deponent, the deponent refers to what happened at the meeting and that in paragraph 22, after the declaration of the results, representatives of the NPP have made changing allegations about the alleged irregularities and malpractices, and so on and so forth. So my lords, in respect of both our evidence, as well as our answer, where we allege bad faith and a changing case all the time, this is very relevant testimony. And it comes through a letter that this witness is, in effect, the signatory of. Now, my lords, the fact that he says he doesn't have personal knowledge of his contents is irrelevant because he says he is deposing to matters within my personal knowledge and information. This is one of the matters about which he has information from the third petitioner in whose shoes he is standing. My Lord, Council supports his arguments with statements from his pleadings, not the pleadings of the petitioners. So they are quite familiar with the documents. So he can wait when his witness goes into the witness box. He turns the document through his witness because quite clearly his witness is very familiar with this document. The witness in the box now says he has no personal knowledge of this document. He does not know anything about this document. It does not form part of his case. And I'll refer your lordships to the Evidence Act, Section 60. With your permission, I will read. 61. A witness may not testify to a matter unless sufficient evidence is introduced to support a finding that he has personal knowledge of that matter. That has not been done. Evidence to prove personal knowledge may, but it not consist of the testimony of the witness himself. 3. A witness may testify to a matter without proof of personal knowledge if no objection is raised by any party. And we are raising an objection to it. And we're saying that he has no personal knowledge of the document sought to be tendered.
High Court, by majority decision of 81, a Nini Abuwa JSC dissenting, the objection is overruled. The court is most grateful. to go and consider one section 125 relating to business records. I mean, we'll just read it. Okay. Yes. Now, can you read the letter that yes, is intended? Can you please mark it and then... Can you read that letter, please? Yes, sir. Yes. It reads as follows. Dear sir, we request for an audit of verification machines and recount of the presidential ballot. I write as chairman of MPP to express concerns of our party over the conduct of this year's general election, particularly with regards to the presidential poll. I'm doing so because I believe that the proper conduct and declaration of results of a credible process is the surest way to promote peace and stability of our democratic nation. I have attacked here with a copy of a statement I issued that has set out in detail our concerns. I ask that you consider the widespread and systemic abuse of the electoral process witnessed across the country and aided by His Excellency the President, John Dramani Mohammed's statement for people to vote, even if not verified by the machines which is clearly unlawful, some of which are cited in our type statement. We request that you, as returning officer of the presidential elections, one, cause an audit of the verif verification machine to establish that it tallies with constituency collated signed results, and, or, and two, order a recollation of the presidential ballot at a constituency level to help establish credibility and accuracy of this year's presidential election. This, in my view, would assist considerably to allay public anxiety, which is growing hour by hour, and due to the announcements being made in the Ghanaian media. It will also obviate any legal and protracted judicial proceedings on the issues and permit the resolutions of our concerns promptly to enable the declaration to be made, to enable due declaration to be made. In light of the above concerns, we request for an immediate meeting with your good self to find a resolution to these matters before you announce the results of the 2012 elections. Yours truly. Jacob Tanko the National Chairman, New Patriotic Party. And you're aware that it was as a result of this letter that a meeting was convened under the auspices of the Peace Council. Are you aware? And I'm not aware of that. Now, um, Dr. Baumia, really, just concluding my questions on the serial number issue, you. I mean, the voters in the polling stations, in all those lists, including where you provide your counterpart, uh, polling stations and so on, the voters in all those polling stations, they did nothing wrong in terms of how they proceeded to vote. We are not complaining about the voters. We are complaining Yeah, we'll be just...
setting our eyes as judges. Now, you're not alleging that any voter that was not qualified to vote was involved in any of those polling stations, are you? About, I'm not alleging that. About 74%. Are you of, alleging of, that you any that. voter, any voter was not qualified to vote in any of those polls? Is that part of your allegation? Let me answer it. About 74% of all people who voted without biometric verification voted in polling stations where duplicate serial numbers were used. Whether those people who voted without biometric verification were qualified to vote or not is between you and I mean we cannot say but the point is that they should have gone through biometric verification and they did not so they violated the law. I see. Uh, yeah, but the, the, the answer you gave, you know, you realize that the concluding part of it was sufficient to answer it. Yeah, yeah so, you spare the letter name. In making your claims, I'm suggesting to you that you deliberately focus your attention on areas of the country, and your claims about serial numbers uh, being duplicated. You deliberately focused on areas of the country which were the strongholds of the first respondent. So no. as to nullify people, you deliberately did that. No, that is not the case at all. In fact, you knew from your computer search, you knew that in terms of serial numbers being the same from one polling station to the other, there were numerous instances of that in the areas which are the stronghold of the first petitioner and yourself as well. You knew that. Well, if you found numerous instances of that, I think you should bring it to the attention of the second respondent. They organized the election. We have brought what we have found. If you found more, please bring it to the attention of the second respondent, because it is a malpractice. That should not have happened. Dr. Bonger, it is not a malpractice, but what I'm asking is important for you to clarify. You saw from your computer search that there were many other areas where serial numbers, areas which were your stronghold, the stronghold of the first petitioner, where serial numbers were duplicated between one polling station and another. Did you or did you not see that? Well, I'm only presenting the results that I did have. You? I have not seen that. I'm only yes. presenting the results that I have. If you have additional results, you are welcome to provide them to the second respondent because we are alleging they did not organize this properly. And what you have done in this court is to provide a selection provide a selection that favors yeah. your interest in becoming the Vice President of Ghana. <laughs> That's what you have done. This, the Lord's, I mean, this question has been repeated in various forms. And when the witness goes on, then they say you should get to his answer. These repetitions, that's what leads to the answers he gets. My Lord, in respect of the, the, the polling, the, the same serial number issue and in respect of the fact that there's been selective presentation of material, I have not asked that question. I have not asked that question. In respect of the same serial number, I'm making a very specific allegation. We will provide evidence. There's no question about that. But I'm putting it to him because he talked uh, about computer science. Uh, he is not against your providing evidence, <laughs> but that you shouldn't, um, you know, harass the witness on the same matter. Because you had put it to him that uh, these malpractices he's alleging were selectively aimed at the strongholds of S respondents and excluding it. So this comes under that rubric. And, uh,
I think we should be spared that. Uh, 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 yes. Well, okay. okay. Objection up, upheld. Yes. Most grateful, my lord. As the court pleases. <laughs> Now, uh, Dr. Baumea. In your petition, the second amended petition, In paragraph 27 of your petition, you actually provide for 26 categories, according to you, of malpractice. Is that correct? Yes, I think this was subsequently reduced to 24. Yeah. time the court ordered further and better particulars, it was in relation to what was in your paragraph. 20 in the petition and 27 in the affidavit. You're aware? Oh, that's, that's right. And we provided them. But if you delete polling stations and therefore they are no longer in a particular category, you cannot present that category when it's empty. And we've deleted 704 polling stations. By the time you saw to your, and this was as a 20, um, the amended petition was as of the 8th of February, and you, you had 26 categories. Yes, my lord. And in your affidavit, you have reduced it to 24 categories. Yes, my lord. And according to you, it's because some categories have become empty. Yes, my lord. Which category in that in that list? Uh, uh, I can, I can. Can you just, um, I think it's paragraph 20. Yeah, I can go through the 24, 26, and then match up with the 24 in the affidavit. The, the two will be the difference. You have your affidavit, and perhaps you can tell us.
collect them. So it is clear, I'm just going the, through them one by one, so just relax.
Yes, my lords. I have two categories that are not part of the 24 that we have in the affidavit from the petition. On page 8 of the amended petition, we have the category of exclusive instances of the joint occurrence of overvoting due to total votes exceeding ballot papers issued to voters or the polling station voters register, two, voting without biometric verification, three, same serial numbers on pink sheets with different results, and four, absence of presiding officer's signatures. Uh, so those four infractions together uh, are not in the new, uh, in the affidavit. Then the second... I think it would be helpful if you give the number the number. Or the paragraph, yeah, the paragraph number, I think, beside each of your... This is number four in the table I'm referring to uh, on page eight of the amended petition. And then on page 10, that is 17, this is the joint occurrence of four infractions again. One, exclu exclusive instances of the joint occurrence of one, overvoting due to total votes exceeding ballot papers issued to voters or the polling station voters register. Two, voting without biometric verification. Three, same serial numbers on pink sheets with different results. And four, Number four, this is a category that had the exclusive instances of the joint occurrence. Of overvoting due four, yes please. Okay. Page ten is seventeen. That's the exclusive instances of the joint occurrence of overvoting due to total votes exceeding ballot papers issued to voters or the polling station voters register. Two, voting without biometric verification. Three, same serial numbers on pink sheets with different results. And four, same polling station code with different results. Can you just um, look at number, I think, 16 in your table? Look, look at um, 20, 26, I'm sorry, 26 in your table. 26 in your table. Exclusive instances of 28 locations, right. which were not part of there. Right. So in, in, in this paragraph, you had included what you have in paragraph 67 of your affidavit. Yes, my right? lord.
In fact, these categories into which you put your allegations, they were categories that you switched from time to time. You, you put some things in one category and later you reclassified and so on. So you switched the categories from time to time. Not, 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 well, not often. I mean, most of them have pretty much remained the same. I think that there's been deletions of categories, uh, but not switching uh, in that sense, no. Well, I mean, you told us of some instances where it's something from exhibit MVP. Oh, sure. In terms of the the polling stations, if if the analysis is that this is overvoting and not voting without biometric verification, it will be moved into the overvoting category. Yes. And what I'm saying is that the categories themselves, in one case there were 26, in another case there were 24. There was nothing sacrosanct about 26 or 24. No, I'm just saying that if you, I mean, we started off with, with 26, I think, and ended up with 24. But if a category is empty, you shouldn't hold on to it. We, we will, the data will dictate. But they've pretty much been the same. And in respect of this, Paragraph 67, you recall that at the time the court was about to give directions, you recall you heard the exchanges in the court about your allegation of 28 polling stations. Yes, my love. You were in court. And, um, you recall that um, counsel for each of the respondents actually said again that we did not receive particulars in respect of 28 polling stations. You recall that, of course. Yes, my lord. And um, you also do recall that your counsel said uh, when a letter was produced with an attachment that you were sticking to 22 polling stations. You recall that? Yes, I think we, we, we uh, initially we were talking about 23, but we only presented particulars at that time, for, as you understood it, for 22, even though in the further and better particulars we had 23 at one point. So we're sticking uh, at the quarters directed to using 22 polling stations. So which of the exhibits in your paragraph 67 is affected? I, I can check that for you, but one of those polling stations will be dropped, I think, has been dropped. No, I think you need to give me an answer because you swore to an affidavit after No, when we swore to the affidavit, we swore to 23 polling stations. When we came to court, we were told that we could only stick with 22 because that was what was provided in the further and better particulars. Yes, so that's why I'm saying that at the time of your affidavit in April, you knew that you were relying on 22, so I just need to know... No, we knew we were relying on 23. Okay. In fact, you were relying on 28. That's why... Is the court didn't indicate which of the, he said 23 in his affidavit, so I'm entitled to ask him. So amongst the exhibits that he's laying, he's relying on in his affidavit, which exhibit is now irrelevant? I'm entitled to ask that because the 22 out of 23 are an issue, but in his affidavit, he says 23. So I'm entitled to ask, which is he not counting on? So what have you Is that relevant? 
It is, because it, it affects voters, my lord. There are voters who were being disenfranchised, according to the allegation in the affidavit. There were voters in that polling station, in that location, there were voters there. So if they have now restricted themselves to 22, those voters are no more uh, affected, are they? But we don't know which is the 20, I mean the 23rd, until he tells me what the 23rd is, I, I cannot say, and it's important for the whole case that we know which, which polling stations is he talking about and which he's not talking about. My, my Lord, this arises from his own affidavit. His affidavit, the court has said that based on their representation, in the letter that was before the court indicating that there were 22 and based on counsel's acknowledgement in open court, there are 22 locations at stake. Now, I don't know which he's taking out of this 22 or which has been taken out. I don't know. I need if, to know. If I recall uh, correct, uh, rightly, I think he even said, even with the 22, the impact is so insignificant, so they are no more pursuing it. Well, that's not the evidence. He didn't For say... For these 23 stations, he didn't, there are 9,000. My, my lords, with, with respect, my lords, with respect, whether it's significant or not significant, there are numbers of voters in respect of whom this, these petitioners have brought before you an application that their votes should be annulled, their votes. And those votes, significant or not significant, each vote counts, each vote matters. So if the witness by his affidavit has referred to 23, all I'm asking is to know which of the voters in these 23 are no longer affected by this annulment claim. Because it's important for those voters to know that their, their votes are not going to be annulled. It's very important for them. My Lord, they are citizens of this country. They are entitled to know that this is not um, uh, this, 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 is, this is not their location that is being affected. That is a question. It appears that uh, the sum total of what has transpired over these 28 uh, is that uh, all of them now are discounted. So. Uh, the question now will be the identities, identities of those stations concerned. There uh, is and, that. Uh, yes, and the results affected are on the pink sheets relating to them. So they can easily be identified and uh, discounted. My Lord, with your greatest respect, I, I have not understood that they are abandoning in respect of all the 28. I have not understood that that was a... No, the, 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 the fact is this, you see, they started with 28. Finally, they were confined to particulars that had provided respect of 22. In the box, it says, oh, even the 22, they are not important, so we are not relying on them. So it follows that the whole 28... My Lord, that is not uh, the position. We are relying on the 22. Uh, we are relying on the 22. We have not abandoned it. Oh, there was a dispute between 1, the 23, which is the 1, 22, 23, and we were restricted to 22, so we are relying on the 22. Oh, I thought I heard your witness saying that. No. Okay. no. Uh, all right, so you are supporting his question. Okay, go on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, let's continue. Yes. So, yes. so in respect of your allegation then, can you tell us, in which the 23rd location whose voters are no longer subject to your claims in this suit? My Lord, the third and very particular they said they saw only 22 polling stations and the court has asked us to restrict ourselves to those 22 polling stations. So those will be the only 22 that we can rely on. It is just what the court has directed, as in the, what it got in the further and better particulars. I don't know what the source of confusion is.
I thought we actually, in the interlocutory stage, we exhibited a letter and a list. And um, my lords, I would uh, respectfully want to, we, did, we didn't bring that to court today because we, we thought this could be simply dealt with. But we would like, in that circumstance, actually to put that in evidence. The letter uh, from counts one of the council um, and, and the list attached to that letter, uh, we, we would like to, uh, uh, we'd like to tender those. I, I, I really thought this would simply be dealt with by his evidence, but it looks like, um, you know, the witness. So I, I would respectfully wish to uh, bring those, um, those, you know, documents which we uh, attached to an affidavit in our interlocutory application so that we can put them to the witness. In other words, Mr. Chiketa wants to tell us he doesn't want to finish today. No, that's no. all what it means. Going no, back no. on this 22 and telling us he has to bring a letter he didn't bring, that he will not finish today. Uh, it may, it may not be, because that can be stood down and other aspects of the cross as I'm continued with. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's just that... Um, Counsel for the petitioners always wants to anticipate me. <laughs> now, can I have the letter? Now, Dr. Bamiya, it is. It, let me help. It is therefore clear, is it not, that you abandoned 20%, about 20% of the polling stations that you described as unknown, you've abandoned your case in respect of about 20% of them. Yes, we've moved from 28 now to 22 polling stations, yes. And equally, in respect of your allegations about padding in favor of first respondent and reduction from the petitioner, the first petitioner, you've abandoned two-thirds of the polling stations where you made the claim. Is that not correct? I think there were three polling stations. I think we are now relying on one in that respect. But as I told so, you, uh, and, and uh, uh, Mr. Linda before, there are many ways of killing a cat. And, and, and they were padding in other ways through overvoting and so on. With apologies to the community. Now, in fact, in fact, um, in fact, have a look at the allegations that you made through the third petitioner in Exhibit 43. That is, um, have a look at paragraph 4. And please read that paragraph out. It was this planned systematic stealing of votes at the coalition level that was thankfully discovered in time at the Domi Kwabenya constituency, where a substantial amount of 15,000 votes was illegally added to the total votes cast in favor of John Dramani Mahama of the NDC. Also in Sabalugu constituency, John Mahama of the NDC received 
21,165 votes, according to the EC at the Collation Center. Like in all the other instances revealing this pattern of fraud, we have the blue sheets to support this blatant, blatant act of rape of the democratic mandate of the people of Ghana. The stealing of votes cast in favor of Nana Akopuadu uh, is rife with fraudulent irregularities as reflected in the results from Yindi constituency, where more than 10,000 votes in this instance have been erased. Now, Dr. Baumia, none of those allegations are true. None of those allegations that were contained in your we did not, statement. This is, these are not part of our case. I think you should focus on the case before this court. Now, you know, Dr. Baumia, we, 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 we have shown, we have indicated the bad faith with which you have been proceeding, and I'm asking there, you there, to read. There, there is no read, bad faith. To read this paragraph in the context of that, Dr. Baumian, in this my petition, Lord, my Lord, as uh, Council keeps saying that there is bad faith on the part of the petitions, we are not aware of any particulars of bad faith given by the respondents. He keeps saying bad faith, bad faith. There are no particulars. I don't know where this bad faith is coming from. Clearly, if they seek to rely on that, they should have given us particulars so we can react. Uh, my Lord, I mean, if you want further and better particulars, you ask for it. So, I don't know, is this an objection to my question? If you want further and better particulars, you ask the party in respect of whom you want that to make that claim to provide it. We've never been provided with a request for further and better particulars of bad faith. I'm sorry. We have in paragraph 27 of our, paragraph 27 of our answer, bad faith is, is pleaded. And the shifting positions are very much a part of our case. The shifting positions, you know, from Friday to Saturday to Sunday and to December 28th and to February 8th, paragraph 27. Um, third, this is paragraph 27 of our... My Lord, our objection is to the fact that no particulars are given as required under the law. It, the High Court was provided where particulars rule, order 11, rule 12, 1, subject to sub rule 2, every pleading shall contain the necessary particulars of any claim, defense or other matter pleaded, including but without prejudice to the generality of the foregoing words. A, particulars of any misrepresentation, fraud, breach of trust, willful default or undue influence on which the party pleading relies, and B, where a party pleading alleges any condition of the mind of any person, whether of any disorder or disability of mind, or any malice, fraudulent intention, or other condition of mind, except knowledge, particulars of the facts on which the party relies. So we are saying that no particulars have been given. If they are saying that there is bad faith, they must provide particulars. My Lord, the High Court rules we have been instructed are not what are in operation in these proceedings. But my Lord, I am referring you to our paragraph 27. The third respondent further states that in bringing this petition before the Honorable Court, Petitioners are acting in bad faith and that the petition is frivolous, vexatious, and abuse of the process of this honorable court. In the affidavit of Johnson Asiedu Nketia, uh, Well, I, I, I don't know whether you are not over uh, replying to his. He's not saying you didn't plead it, he's saying that you didn't give particulars. So 
if you have answered his argument about particular tender surfaces. We have pleaded, we have pleaded the changing positions of the petitioners and we have in our affidavit, we, ha we have in our affidavit also, we have made clear these changing positions, these different statements, and, and I will refer in a moment when I have the affidavit to the paragraphs of, of that. My Lord, in paragraph 13, we say that spokespersons of the first petition and of the new patriotic party have given different figures as the figures by which they claimed the votes of the first respondent had been illegally inflated without, giving, without ever giving a meaningful account of how this occurred. That is a specific a specific feature of bad faith. This is paragraph 13 of, 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 the, of the amended answer. Uh, who's the amended answer? Uh, the third respondent. Paragraph 12 also, where we refer to this meeting, prior to the said meeting, spokespersons of the first petitioner made a number of false allegations, including allegations that the premises of the company referred to in paragraph 8 of their petition to Block Technologies Limited, STL, were being used to change the results of the elections in favor of first respondent, who was even alleged to be on the premises. Allegations which were exposed as false upon investigations involving observers such as General Lushe Gunobasanto, a former president of Nigeria, who led one of the observer groups. I mean, these are all allegations that go to bad faith. And if any further and better particulars would be requested, of course, we are ready to provide them, but we have not had any such request. Yes.
want to take care to be consistent with our rulings. That yes, this matter came up either in the same manner or to the same. And we gave a ruling on it, which we want to locate and compare with what has transpired. So we'll rule on this first thing tomorrow morning and proceed. Uh, it's already 4.37. My lords, I just would uh, like to have uh, the confirmation that we will be getting a revised form of the information, the counterpart information that well, they undertook. Um, uh, so you are being reminded. Yes, my lord, um, we're, we're working on it. As I said, the information has already been provided. This is just formatting, and uh, we're working on it. Yes, yes. the formatting. So as soon as it's ready. Um, as to, he is saying tomorrow, when it comes, when, when we come, it should be ready. Well, that's what I'm saying, that the information has been provided. We can tell them what he has. Everything is there. He just wants us to format it. Now, let's working go on backwards. It. We have traversed that ground. And the undertaking was that, well, the cleanup can be made and presented, and that's what we are saying. Yes, but should be, should we, be brought we are, tomorrow. We are working on it. It takes time. They are working on it now, as we are here. They are working on it. Okay. Yes. All right. Tomorrow is uh, 16th. 15th. All right. Well, case is adjourned to tomorrow, 15th May 2013, at 9.30, prompt. We have taken our 10 o'clock, and all those days close to 10 o'clock, so we are now left with 9.30, prompt. <laughs>